Kremlin surprise visit to KLIE aims to protect immigration integrity. Rescue operation for missing victims and water surge incident resumes. Good afternoon and salam Malaysia Madani. I'm Mohana Priya and this is Updates at Noon. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim explained that his surprise visit to the Kuala Lumpur International Airport yesterday was aimed at raising the credibility and integrity of the Immigration Department, which is being publicly criticised. The Prime Minister said from his observation, the majority of the immigration personnel at KLIA performed their duties well and only a small handful were still with the old practices. Semalam saya sebelum uh, menyambut ke, ke, keberangkatan pulang buat dulu yang mahmud uh, saya baru kaya dengan Tuan Agung saya sempat ke KLA kerana ada sedikit sebanyak keributan keributan kecil uh, tentunya saya lihat umpamanya semua counter migration berfungsi maknanya majority uh, staff migration menjalankan tugas dengan baik tetapi seperti mana juga kita sedar dan sering saya tekankan ada kelumpulan kecil yang masih biasa dengan sistem dan amalan yang lama saya percaya hal itu hal bidang kuasa SPRM yang harus bertindak selalu kita sebut nilai setitik rosak sebelangan Datuk Sri Anwar was speaking at the Prime Minister's Department's monthly assembly in Putrajaya today. Yesterday, the Premier was at KLIA for about 30 minutes and from the visit, he found the management and operation of the Customs Department and the Immigration Department under control and stated that appropriate action would be taken to improve the situation and resolve any problems. The philosophy of Sir Gulai Sejalai of the Dayak community in general and the Iban in particular should also be learned by Malaysians as a unifying force to strengthen the nation. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said that philosophy is the best policy so that problems do not arise to divide the people. He said it can be seen how the longhouses in Batong and other areas in Sarawak have successfully produced good leaders because the policy of the longhouse leaders is often pro-establishment. Datuk Sri Zahid, who is also the Rural and Regional Development Minister, said this during a meet-and-greet event at Rumah Entari Lengkoi in Samu, Spau, near Batong, yesterday. He reminded the people not to entertain any attempt to split the people but to maintain commonalities in order to solve the problem. Describing the relationship between the Sarawak State Government and the Federation as wonderful, Datuk Sri Zahid says it facilitates the implementation of projects of the people's interest. Before that, he approved the implementation of the Batong Integrated Village Economic Development Project or PROSPEC in addition to the allocation of 1.5 million ringgit and 700 and 50,000 ringgit respectively for the repair and rewiring of Rumah and Tari Lengkoi. Agriculture and Food Security Minister Datuk Sri Mohamad Sabu will visit Rome in Italy and Budapest in Hungary to strengthen cooperation in the agricultural sector from the 2nd to the 8th of July. In a statement, the Ministry of Agriculture and Food, Indus Food Security said that Datuk Sri Mohamad will attend the plenary session of the 43rd Food and Agriculture Organization FAO conference in Rome, Italy. The conference is a platform for each head of delegation to make a country statement under the State of Food and Agriculture Review agenda. This year is themed Water Resources Management for the Four Better. Better production, better nutrition, better environment and better living to achieve the 2030 Agenda and Sustainable Development Goals. During the FAO conference, Dato Sri Mohamad will meet with his counterpart, Italian Minister of Agriculture, Food Sovereignty and Forests, Francesco. Go Lolo Brigida for a bilateral meeting to strengthen cooperation in the agricultural sector, 
including economic, investment and technical cooperation. The minister will continue his visit to Budapest on the 6th of July with a bilateral meeting with Hungarian Agricultural Minister Istvan Nagy to sign a memorandum of understanding in the field of agriculture between the two countries. The second day search and rescue operation, or SAR, for the remaining eight victims missing in the water search incident in Jiram Mawa, Aiputih Kamam and Trunganu, resumed at 9 a.m. today. The victims had been at the waterfall for a picnic since 2 p.m. on Saturday when a sudden water surge hit the area. Party. Kamaman Police Chief Superintendent Hanyan Ramlan said the family members were identified as Karim Abdullah, 39, Putri Balkis Izati Abdurrahman, 18, Putri Aliya Maisara Karim, 16, Putri Nur Fatim Karim, 14, Putri Nurina Natasha Karim, 10, Mohamed Hazik Zikri Karim, 6, and Putri Ariana Umaira Karim, 4. The other person missing is Putri Balkis Izati's fiancé, Mohamed Fikri Saliman, 24, from Batu Pahat, Johor. Earlier, the dead victims were identified as Aziza E, 40, and her son, Mohamed Zulkarnayin Haikal Karim, 11, who were found at about 12.30 p.m. Superintendent Hanyan said the remains of the two victims were identified by family members at Kamaman Hospital Forensics Unit last night. He said the SER operation today will involve three phases of the search area, depending on the weather conditions. In the meantime, he said the bodies of Aziza and Mohammad Zulkarnayin Haikal were taken to the Sultana Nur Zahira Hospital in Kuala Trunganu today for a post-mortem. 36 visitors to Menara Taming Sari in Bandar Hilimlaka faced an anxious moment when the platform of the revolving gyro tower stopped moving, leaving them hanging at a height of 60 metres. However, Malacca Fire and Rescue Department spokesperson, Assistant Fire Superintendent Mohamed Hanif Mustafa said all victims were safely rescued. Assistant Fire Superintendent Mohamed Hanif said they received a distress call regarding the incident at 5.58 p.m. and arrived at the scene about seven minutes later. He said the maintenance crew brought all victims down using a supplementary motor. He said the rescue personnel also oversaw the rescue operation to ensure the safety of all the victims, who included 26 adults, eight children, one elderly person and one person with disabilities. One of the victims, Zuliani Zulkibli, 42, from Bidong Kedah, said the platform did a 360-degree turn twice while at the top before coming to a complete stop. She said there were tourists who experienced shortness of breath because the platform only has one service door and no windows. Fortunately, the management of the tower sent maintenance workers to carry out repair work on the platform. Zuliani said that the maintenance workers had to manually bring down the platform in order for all the passengers to be able to exit safely. Now, a total of 1,286 summonses were issued by the Kuala Lumpur Road Transport Department to JPG for various traffic offences in Obhas Motorcycle, which began last Tuesday in conjunction with the Ideal Other House celebration. Kuala Lumpur JPG Deputy Director Eric Jusyang said the summonses were issued mostly for driving without a licence, 535 notices, and expired road tax, 237 notices. Kesalahan-kesalahan yang kita kena pasti yang paling tinggi ialah uh, leset, uh, tiada leset yang bawa jumlah sebanyak 535 kes. Okay, jadi uh, yang keduanya uh, tiada LKM. Keseluruhan yang kes yang uh, yang tak ada lesen tu tadi saya secara keseluruhan empat hari 535, 535 orang yang tak ada insurans uh, 204 itu keseluruhan, keseluruhan empat hari itu ni jadi saya masih uh, apa nama saya menggesal lah sebab ramai lagi masih tak renew uh, insurans ada yang kes dah jumpa sampai dua tahun dua tahun dia tak renew tapi tindakan yang kita buat ialah penyitaan kenderaan sebut.
In the meantime, Eric said that in the operation that was mounted together with the Immigration Department, 70 foreigners aged between 23 and 45 years were detained for various offences. He said the foreigners comprised 59 men and 11 women, and they were taken to the Kuala Lumpur Immigration Office in Jalan Duta for the documentation process. The Ministry of Domestic Trade and Cost of Living, KPDN, through its agency, the Companies Commission of Malaysia, SSM, today announced an additional initiative for compound reduction to support the current phase of business and corporate recovery. SSM informed that the Compound Reduction Initiative under the Limited Liability Partnership Act 2012 involved a compound reduction of 90% to owners of limited liability partnerships who had complied with the compounds. The initiative is effective from today to 31st December and will benefit 16,765 limited liability partnerships. This initiative is in line with SSM's efforts to encourage legal compliance in addition to creating a conducive business environment in Malaysia. Earlier this year, SSM announced eight initiatives to help in the country's economic recovery, including three compound reduction initiatives. For further information, please contact the SSM call centre by calling the number on your screen or email inquiry at ssm.com.my. Customers of Al Raji Banking and Investment Corporation Malaysia Berhad can now save in six major foreign currencies. The bank said its customers can deposit with the bank's commodity Murabaha foreign currency current account I. The six major foreign currencies are the Australian dollar, euro, British pound, Saudi rial, Singapore dollar and US dollar. In a statement, the bank said customers need to make an initial 1,000 US dollar deposit or its equivalent in any of the denominations listed to open an individual account and earn up to 5% profit rate per annum. It said Al Raji Bank Malaysia's returns are calculated daily and paid monthly. There is also no lock-in period and customers can enjoy the profit rate immediately and withdraw their deposits at any time. The bank's commodity, Murabaha Foreign Currency Current Account I, is beneficial to parents with children studying overseas, expatriates and those who travel frequently or have businesses overseas. The account also enables customers to expand their investments in foreign currencies. up on the foreign front, two killed and dozens others injured in the latest mass shooting incident. At least two people were killed and 28 wounded in a mass shooting at a street party in the U.S. city of Baltimore early Sunday morning. Officials said more than one assailant opened fire at the celebration in Baltimore, which has one of the highest homicide rates in America. The motive for the latest chapter in America's gun violence crisis was not immediately known and police appealed for anyone with information about who was responsible to come forward. One 18-year-old woman was found dead at the scene and a 20-year-old man died after being taken to hospital. Acting Police Commissioner Richard Wally said the victims range in age from 13 to 32. As of Sunday afternoon, all but nine of the 28 wounded had been released from hospitals as some remained in critical condition. Mayor Brandon Scott said the incident highlights the impacts and the need to deal with the over-proliferation of illegal guns. With more firearms than inhabitants, the United States has the highest rate of gun deaths of any developed country. Sunday's incident was at least the 338th mass shooting to occur so far this year. The Israeli army said on Monday it struck targets in the occupied West Bank city of Jenin in what they claimed was an extensive counter-terrorism effort. The Palestinian health ministry said one resident was killed and another person was injured in the attack. The Israeli army said its forces had struck a joint operations centre, which it claimed served as a command post for the Jenin Brigade, a local freedom fighter group. The Israeli army regularly conducts raids into the area, which is normally under the control of President Mahmoud Abbas' Palestinian Authority.
The Army said the early Monday operation had targeted an observation and reconnaissance site, as well as a weapons storage facility and a hideout for those alleged to have carried out attacks on Israeli targets in recent months. In June, Israel's military killed seven people in a raid on Jenin camp, among them two 15-year-olds and at least one militant. That raid also saw the army fire missiles from a helicopter, something not seen in the West Bank since 2002 during the second Palestinian Intifada. Days later, Israeli forces killed three members of a freedom fighter in a drone strike near Jenin, the first use of a strike in the West Bank in years. Violence has increased in recent months and since the start of the year, at least 177 Palestinians, 25 Israelis, a Ukrainian and an Italian have been killed. The grandmother of the French teenager killed by police sparking riots called for calm on Sunday as the home of the mayor of a Paris suburb was attacked with a burning car in a new eruption of violence. Now, the government of President Emmanuel Macron has been battling five nights of violent protests since 17-year-old Nahil M was shot dead by police officer in the Paris suburb during a traffic check. The killing of Nahil M, who was of Algerian origin, has revived long-standing accusations of institutional racism within the French police. The Interior Ministry said 719 people were arrested overnight, around half the figure of the previous night. Intense clashes were nevertheless reported in several places, including the southern city of Marseille. Politicians condemned the attack on the home of Vincent Jobron, the right-wing mayor of the Le Hair Le Roses outside Paris, in which assailants rammed a burning car into his home with the aim of setting it on fire. Jean Brun's wife and children, aged five and seven, were at home when the mayor himself was at the town hall to deal with the riots. The wife was badly injured, sustaining a broken leg. Prosecutors have opened an attempted murder investigation. Now, the Saudi-based Organization of Islamic Cooperation on Sunday called for collective measures to avoid future Al-Quran burnings. Days after a copy was torched outside a Stockholm mosque, the 57-member body met at its Jeddah headquarters to respond to Wednesday's incident in which an Iraqi citizen living in Sweden, Salwan Momika, 37, stomped on the Islamic holy book and set several pages alight. It coincided with the start of the Idul Adha holiday and the end of the annual Hajj pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia, sparking anger across the Muslim world. On Sunday, the OIC urged member states to take unified and collective measures to prevent the recurrence of incidents of desecration of copies of the Al-Quran. The body's Secretary General, Hissin Ibrahim Taha, stressed the need to send constant reminders to the international community regarding the urgent application of international law, which clearly prohibits any advocacy of religious hatred. Countries including Iraq, Kuwait, the United Arab Emirates and Morocco have summoned Swedish ambassadors in protest. Swedish police had granted Salman Momika a permit in line with free speech protections, but authorities later said they had opened an investigation over agitation. up in sports, Verstappen records 42nd win of his career at the Austrian, Austrian GP. Perlawanan bola sepak Liga Super 2023. Pertembungan sengit terus menggegar aksi perlawanan. Isnin 3 Julai, Johor Darul Ta'zim bertemu Kuala Lumpur City FC 8.30 malam di TV2 dan saluran sukan RTM. Saksikan juga secara penstriman langsung di RTM Click. 
Taking off with our sports segment today, Max Verstappen won Red Bull's home Austrian Grand Prix from pole position and with a faster slap on Sunday for the team's 10th successive Formula One victory and 9th in nine races this season. Now Verstappen, who also won Saturday's 100km sprint race and leaves Spielberg's Red Bull ring with maximum points, stretched his lead over Mexican teammate Sergio Perez to 81 points. It was also the Dutch driver's seventh of a dominant campaign, taking him ever closer to a third title. Charles Leclerc was second, five seconds adrift for Ferrari's milestone 800th podium, while Perez fought from 15th at the start to third in a race littered with time penalties as drivers repeatedly exceeded the track limits. The win was of Verstappen's 42nd of his career and one more than the late Brazilian great Ayrton Senna. It was also his fifth success at the Red Bull ring more than any driver and left him more than three race wins clear of Perez. Carlos Sainz was fourth for Ferrari with Lando Norris fifth for McLaren and Fernando Alonso sixth for Aston Martin. Seven times world champion Lewis Hamilton was seventh for Mercedes with teammate George Russell eighth and Pierre Gasly was ninth for Alpine. Lance Stroll took the final point for Aston Martin. A minute silence was held before the start in respect of 18-year-old Dutch driver Delano van Hoff, who died in a junior series race at Belgium's Spa-Francorchamps circuit on Saturday. And in football, Liverpool have signed Hungarian midfielder Dominic Soboslai from Bundesliga side RB Leipzig for a reported 70 million euros release clause in his contract. Soboslai becomes the club's second recruit under new sporting director Jörg Schmatke after Argentine Alexis McAllister as Liverpool look to revamp their midfield following a disappointing season. With Liverpool having spoken to the players' representatives earlier in the week, the move advanced quickly. Liverpool triggered his release clause, which was set to expire on Friday at the last minute. Soboslai was seen as a more viable alternative to Mason Mount. Liverpool were interested in the Chelsea midfielder as he entered the final 12 months of his contract, but he proved to be a more expensive option involving less straightforward negotiations. The Hungary international scored 20 goals and provided 22 assists in 91 games since joining Leipzig in the 2021 winter transfer window. Soboslai helped Leipzig win back-to-back -back German Cups and scored their second goal as the beat Eintracht Frankfurt 2-0 in last season's final in early June. French club Racing Strasbourg have appointed Patrick Vieira as their new manager on a three-year contract. Former France international Vieira coached Premier League side Crystal Palace from 2021 to this year and was sacked mid-March following a 1-0 defeat at Brighton and Hove Albion that left the South London club three points above the relegation zone. Last month, the consortium Bluco, which purchased Chelsea last year, entered an agreement to become shareholders of the club. The agreement will see Bluco invest in Strasbourg's first teams and academy, while Keller will remain the club's president, having been at the helm since 2012 when the club was at risk of being liquidated. Strasbourg have since moved up from the third tier to League One, where they've played for the last six seasons and also won the French League Cup in 2019. They finished 15th in the league last season. Right, now moving on to tennis. World number one Carlos Alcaraz is the new big thing in men's tennis. But Novak Djokovic remains the favourite to retain his Wimbledon title this month. Now the 20-year-old Alcaraz won the prestigious Queen's Club title last week in what was only his third tournament on grass, moving back to the top of the rankings at the same time. He will also be seeded number one for Wimbledon on his third appearance at the All England Club with some tipping him for the title. Uh, and uh, yeah, in coming here to Wimbledon with a, with a lot of confidence, you know, uh, thinking that uh, I'm able to, to do a good results here. But uh, obviously, 
uh, you know, for me the main favorite is, is, is Djokovic. That's obviously, but uh, my expectations are are high. You know, I think I, I will be able to, you know, uh, put the pressure on the uh, on the other other players, even Djokovic as well. But uh, you know, uh, I all I can say is I, I feel with a lot of confidence I, and I feel ready to, to do uh, good things here. Alcaraz reached the fourth round last year when he was beaten by Italian youngster Yannick Sinner but has since moved ahead of his peers, taking the tennis world by storm. He will start against experienced Frenchman Jeremy Chardy on Tuesday. And while his early draw looks reasonable, he could face Germany's Alexander Zarev or Alex de Minois, the Australian he beat in the Queen's final in the fourth round. Now, expectation is high for the Spaniard, but he says he is not feeling any pressure and will play his naturally aggressive game from the get-go. Meanwhile, for Elena Rybakina, the main goal in Wimbledon is to defend her Grand Slam title for the first time in her career. The world number three said that she does not feel pressure despite a virus hampering her preparation ahead of her title defence. The unassuming Ribakina was a surprise champion last year, and though there were no ranking points on offer, she used it as a stepping stone to make deep runs in tournaments and win titles to climb up the rankings. She reached the Australian Open final where she lost to Arina Sabalenka, but took her revenge when she captured the Indian Wells crown before lifting the trophy in Rome to rise up to a career high number three last month. Uh, yeah, of course, it's different this year, and uh, I won't say that I feel so much pressure. Of course, uh, uh, people are talking around, but uh, the important thing is that we keep on working with the team. They're also trying to help me out to prepare for the matches, and uh, yeah, I think this is something to get used also, and uh, hopefully my level is going to stay uh, that high. and. Uh, uh, is going to be a normal thing to come in defense. The big serving Kazakh has only played two matches on grass following her French Open third round withdrawal. However, after a viral illness forced her to lay low. The 24 year old said it took her a full week before she could get back to training for the grass court swing and was forced to pull out of a warm up event in Eastbourne as she was not ready. Yeah, of course, it's different this year. Meanwhile, last year's Wimbledon runner-up Nick Kyrgios has pulled out of the tournament with a wrist injury on the eve of the grass court Grand Slam. In a post on his Instagram account, the 28-year-old said he experienced some pain in the wrist during the week of Mallorca. He was immediately scanned and the result showed a torn ligament in his wrist. Kyrgios had a surgery on his left knee earlier this year and lost in his comeback match after a five-month layoff against China's Wu Yibing in the Stuttgart Open first round last month. He missed the French Open due to a foot injury he sustained during the theft of his car. Kyrgios also withdrew from grass court events in Hale and Mallorca. And with that, we reach the end of today's update set noon. In our leading story today, PM's surprise visit to KLIA aims to protect immigration integrity. Don't forget to join us again tonight at 8.30 p.m. on TV Satu and Saluran Berita RTM. Till then, I'm Mohanapriya, Malaysia Madani, Tekat Perpaduan, Penuhi Harapan.